Uh, but I'd now like to start the uh, first discussion of the morning, um, and I'd like to introduce two esteemed speakers. Matthew's going to stay with us for this session, but two speakers um, I'm delighted um, to, that can join us um, to discuss Europe's landscape in the shadow of the pandemic. Wolfgang Schussel, former Federal Chancellor of Austria, and now president of the Foreign Policy and United Nations Association of Austria, who will be our first speaker, and John Bruton, former Taoiseach or Prime Minister of the Republic of Ireland. A warm welcome to both of you. And let me hand straight over to you, Mr. Schussel. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, John. Um, first of all, congratulations for this uh, conference. I'm happy to be with you. Economist is my favorite weekly newspaper, and uh, I'm also delighted to discuss with my friend uh, John Bruton. We were together, uh, members of the European Council, and it's always a pleasure to see you. Now let us start with uh, the, the global figures. Uh, just uh, briefly, more than uh, 40 million people infected, uh, between around 1.5 million people died. The global economy is 8% uh, lower than it uh, could have been without the pandemic, plus three expected, minus five, the reality. And uh, we should not forget that um, COVID-19 is uh, a big unequalizer. The poorest people and the weakest uh, nations uh, and countries are the most affected. And it's not over. It is not over. We have now the second wave in uh, different uh, countries, uh, especially Europe is uh, strongly affected. And uh, the question now for our discussion is, is there hope? And I strongly say yes, there is hope, there are silver linings. First, uh, public health. Um, we have now a better understanding of the virus. Uh, we have a better treatment. The mortality is significant, significantly lower than it was in spring. We have uh, a much better cooperation within the European Union and between nations, especially the European Medical Agency. John, you remember, um, we decided uh, the rules for this uh, EMA in our uh, time in the European Council. Uh, this is very important for sharing information, medical equipment, promoting the production of vaccines, etc. And I think also the political and economic response was fast and strong. The G20 countries injected uh, around 11 trillion uh, US dollar. The Eurozone budget, by the way, also quite interesting, this year uh, is, uh, is, is risen to more than 1 trillion euro. This is 10 times more than it was in uh, 2019. And uh, next year it will also remain high with uh, 700 billion euro. Uh, the G20 countries uh, postponed the debt service payment for 76 uh, of the poorest countries. And the central banks, uh, the Chinese bank, the Fed, uh, the ECB, the BUG, did their utmost to stimulate the economy. And by the way, uh, not to forget, the EU fixed the next seven years budget, uh, more than 1 trillion euro, and the next, the next generation fund, to help and to support uh, the consequences of the uh, corona crisis with 750 billion, uh, with a strong focus to digitization and decarbonization. And there is a, a big caveat. Um, a lot depends, as uh, you um, previously said, um, on the role of the state and uh, the use, the, the appropriate use of the existing money. Of course, it was right in the first phase to say all in whatever it takes uh, to support people and their income to support liquidity. But I think the next phase, this is not enough. That we should not restore yesterday's economy. The government should adapt and encourage change. The Green Deal, digitization, etc. And Romania, by the way, is an interesting case, an interesting uh, showcase. Uh, Romania will get a huge chunk of the EU money in the next years to come. You have the, maybe better and uh, more precise figures, but I estimate it's around 80 billion uh, euro, most of it uh, grants. 
And the problem was uh, already mentioned in the last period, uh, 2014 to 2020, Romania got around 30 billion and only 40 percent, 40 percent of this money was uh, end of September used in an appropriate way. So uh, I think uh, how to use this money and how to do it in a, in a very professional and uh, significant better way, this is the, the real challenge for Romania. And by the way, timing is uh, decisive because you have uh, de facto to develop projects and uh, priorities uh, for the next three years to come. So there is an enormous uh, need to improve public governance. And uh, this is an, a precondition for Romania um, to get uh, infrastructure, highways, especially data highways, data centers, um, to digitize say, to digitize uh, the economy, the government, e-health, uh, digi-health, education, etc. But I have to admit, uh, finally, Final sentence, uh, the road is not easy. It is a long and a bumpy road. We have a lot of uh, uncertainties ahead of us, and uh, especially trade uh, is a significant and a decisive factor. And during the last period, 2008 to 18, we already had uh, an, a slowing down of uh, the growth of trade by half compared with the decade before. And now we have uh, the tensions between US and China, and uh, a lot of other political risks. Uh, so this is not an easy road, but I think the European Union as such uh, made their homework and uh, I think we are now on track. Hopefully Romania is it too. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Schussel. That's very helpful indeed.